All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So the um, name for the new channel is almost final. I have been discussing with my team as well. We discuss with patrons as well. I'll bring that uh, set of names uh, to YouTube poll as well. Uh, so far, my team's message was that keep a name other than Dr. Bean so that folks who become upset um, it becomes my personal responsibility um, because the topics are sensitive. So it might be Mubin Sayyid live talks or Cool Beans live talks, and I'll bring the list for you to vo vote on, but just an update. And this is why I'm still not, I haven't still created it. I just don't want to create a channel, then leave it in the middle, and then create an another. So I want to have the name correctly. So there was a request to not remove these. So here these are. Um, I think that you would never forget that there is a cluster of 12 to 19 nucleotide changes that are in one place on spike protein called furine cleavage site. So <laughs> I'll try to take them off one by one. Ouch. So uh, let's very quickly look at the Israel's dashboard. Hey, Eric, how are you? Yeah, I was thinking of uh, moving the chit chats tomorrow, but I saw some messages that hey, leave the dots on and come back. So here I am. Let's do Israel's uh, <laughs> Sky. How are you? Alexander says, Doctor B Bean looks weary these days. I hope he's fine. I am fine. Uh, I'm fine. It's just that I have to figure out how do we move forward with the. Um, with the account. So that's the. So there's a question BA2, is it a, con, a concern? So I did a discussion about BA2, and um, at least in theory, it, it is a little more uh, transmissible, a little more pathogenic, but also a little more less escapable because it doesn't have the furin cleavage site mutation that BA1 had. And then from a clinical point of view, it doesn't show to be any more clinically dangerous than BA1. So that latest Japanese study that came out and that said it is uh, three times more uh, pathologic for or pathogenetic, pathogenic for the lung tissue. That is correct that that is what they saw in vitro. But in clinical settings, we are not seeing BA2 to be that dangerous otherwise all spikes and deaths and everything would start going back up so janet says i just joined your lifetime lectures just amazingly thank you and amazingly i feel uh, smarter already thank you very much for buying that um john snyder says ba2 is a concern ba2 is just a concern so far, the studies or the clinical side is not showing it. It is a concern that it is a little more um, pathogenic than BA1. Okay, so um, let's look at Israel's dashboard. If I try to increase it in size, it becomes a little wobbly, but that would be, I think, better. Maybe I leave it at this size. Let's see if this size would work. So, see, the header just becomes too big. Can the header not go away? Okay, so here. <clears throat> Number of hospitalized daily. And so these are, I don't know what hard, medium, and easy means. This may be something to do with the uh, immunization. This is Google translation. It sometimes does this weird translation. But anyways, hard, medium, easy last month. What are the other? Up to now, sleep, month six, month three. But hospitalization. So hospitalizations are reducing. That is good. 
hospitalized hospitalized condition daily change is that severity that um, mild moderate severe maybe it is that luffy is not out today and he is so it may be mild moderate and severe and so uh, at the moment 73 37 and 63 new verified daily so that is actually reducing beds occupied 82 percent moving average is 73 percent if i go back here this is the friday 3 12 21 3 12 so um is it first is the day right so 3rd of december 2021 95 percent occupancy and at this time 85 percent so slightly lower occupancy of hospital beds i have to <laughs> learn some of the hebrew so i think these are different hospitals and their hospital or chains so for example asuta Ash ashdod this is 11.3 percent general occupancy i said 11 113 percent 113 sheba 97.5 or 108 to naido 75 to 1 so what is the difference in them internal class occupancy general occupancy so let's continue Vaccination against influenza virus cumulative. That's that. Do I still have more of these? Uh, pediatric disease. So verified children trends, moving average. Remind me not to put on dots on my face again. <laughs> so here, 5 to 11, 0 to 4. So if I go here, 0 to 4, 1009, 5 to 11, 2271, then 1000, and then 785. What is this? Verified children trend, pediatric disease. So, this is the uh, uh, COVID in children. Isolated children trend. So, that is What would isolated children trend mean? They are almost similar numbers. Let's go to the <laughs> age and vaccination. Daily verified immunization, severely ill and immunization. This would be interesting. So severely ill, active per 100,000 residents over the age of 60. So they are, let's say, Let's see yesterday. So that is 22nd. Today is 24th. So 22nd Feb. Unvaccinated 229. Vaccinated with validity, which I would suspect is booster 57. And vaccinated, sorry, vaccinated without validity, maybe without booster 57. And vaccinated, maybe their definition is with booster. So that is 18.7. So that is the severely ill that is above 60 if i go to um, up till 60 i hope it over the age of 60 i think there is a confirm button near the end so if i said until the age of 60 and then say confirmation this is what we have so if i go back to 22nd unvaccinated 2.9 vaccinated without booster 3.5 and fully vaccinated 1.2 that's interesting so vaccinated without booster or more again their group size for vaccinated is also changing okay so dots are all off yes all right so my, not not vaccinated three vaccinated without booster 3.3 immunized 1.2 again there is a larger proportion of vaccinated Active patient age and immunization. 
this is very interesting so active patients age and immunization so people who are actually patient so if i go here 5 to 11 years of age unvaccinated 983 no vaccine information is invalid not known and then vaccinated 1463.7 again it is going to be interesting to see the cohort size then this is 12 to 15 unvaccinated 795 vaccinated without booster 1841.6 vaccinated which i would think is fully three dose 1062 so then 16 to 19 unvaccinated 945 vaccinated without booster 1110 vaccinated 1080 if i go to this side 90 plus unvaccinated 6972 vaccinated without booster 852 vaccinated with booster uh, one, uh, 2000 so 80 to 89 i love it that they have these uh, 10 years marks instead of 18 to 49 like we do here unvaccinated 80 to 89 4591 vaccinated without booster 1200 vaccinated i would suspect with booster 1200 so it is interesting that in the lower ages vaccinated are more cases than unvaccinated but i do not have the pool size the cohort size in the higher ages the same problem i do not have the cohort size but still unvaccinated seem to be more than the vaccinated so if i go here this is 50 to 59 my age bracket uh, unvaccinated 2000 vaccinated without booster about 1000 and vaccinated with booster 8000 as well so that is interesting. Seriously ill and hospitalized. Let's see where is the vaccine information with that as well. Hospitalized condition, daily change. This is deaths. Daily deaths immunization status. So this is with the immunization status. So for example, if I go in here, 10.8 folks who were unvaccinated and died again out of what is the cohort size don't know vaccinated without validity which is without a booster i guess 3.6 vaccinated with booster 0 0.6 so you can see the trend down here as well i'm sure they have a population size of vaccination as well somebody needs to just sit down to you know to look at those um percentage of positive subjects and so on so that is the uh, I love to see there are not severe corona tests daily number of subjects by age group this is also interesting further interrogation is that there are not yes so are not is at this time 0 0.66 so it's winding up or winding down <laughs> In my, uh, what I used to learn with the English, winding up meant finishing. Trend of new insulators, a segment of uh, various indices. So I think this is good. We see that. Now let's look at the other side. <laughs> Alquin says, are not, are not. Yes. Um, <laughs> Janet says, half-hearted dot placing. I did so many dots. You still are calling it half-hearted. Janet, that's not fair. Alquin, um, V or RT? <laughs> v or RT. That is effective. Is this the effective one or, uh, or not? Let's see. If I go up, this is the epidemic. R equals 1 divided by R greater than 1. Uh, R equals 1, R greater than 1, epidemic in spread. Doesn't look like effective to me, but maybe. To me, it looks like the formula seems uh, R not. Okay. 
Okay, so so the truth free says I hear Pfizer shared a study with the US that the spike protein is entering the cell nucleus and their vaccine. The US made the docs public yesterday. Already the US was aware. Is this concerning? I have to see the I have discussed a such a study in the past from, I believe, Sweden, where they said that spike protein co-locates to nucleus, uh, but they were under investigation, their study. So Pfizer vaccine spike protein enters nucleus. Would that be the one? <laughs> Guess what? The top video is mine. Spike protein goes to nucleus. That was the Swedish study. Um, understanding Moderna RNA vaccines will will enter the muscle cell, and so that's not the one. No, so I don't see it. So it will be concerning if it is the way you are saying, but I need to see the um, study itself. Paul says winding up also means ending. That's what I thought winding up we used to use. <laughs> Skyfrog says, do you need to be a medical professional to wear dots? Yes. And you have to have a white coat with that and some dots in the white coat as well. So what else is happening? <laughs> Um, <laughs> so John says a suggestion two nights ago I took advantage of your YouTube special thank you very much you should pin the link on top of the chat during all your presentations to make it more accessible that is very interesting the question is how do I do it so let me just quickly see I use stream yard and I'll have to search for it that can I pin a link through StreamYard. Okay, I'll, um, John, I would research afterwards so that don't waste your time. But thank you very much for the suggestion and thank you very much for becoming a cool, cool bean. Uh, Any says, uh, so we have randomly broken DNA cells. So the DNA breakage occurs all the time. Even now, the lights are falling on me. That would be causing some breakage. If I do this, my cells would start breaking and some DNAs will break as well. Um, X-rays cause breakage of this. Heat cause breakage of the cells. There are so many things that can cause breakage of the DNA, including insult by the, uh, the infections. So DNA breaks all the time. We repair it all the time as well. When we cannot repair it, normally we kill that cell or we ask that cell to kill itself. Sometimes that doesn't happen and the cell becomes immortal and that becomes a cancer. So yes, during an infection or a stressful situation with the tissue, there will be cells broken, DNA broken. Yes. Even not stressful, but let's say lying down on a beach would break cell uh, DNA in the cell. <laughs> Alex, Dr. Bean, why where are all my garage sale stickers? So actually, that is funny. I went to find these stickers in garage today, and I could not find them. So I ran to Staples before this talk, and I brought them. So Donnie says, from your previous live from tonight with msh3 is there any way to reverse or slow it down or help your body fight it off better so so far from the evidence side of the world we are not seeing this evidence yet maybe there would be studies that would show it the only one study that actually looked at modified b cells they were not actual B cells. They took, I believe, HEK cells, 
then they modified their genes to open them up for to make them look like B cell. Then they transfected with the virus. So then they said, well, the spike protein went to the nucleus. But that whole system was a, was a setup. There is no yet, no study to show this happens, what we discuss, MSH3. So what would happen is some researchers will mark the amino acids that would take part in MSH3 or nucleotides that make up that sequence and then put that sequence in somebody and see or in some in vitro cells and then see if those proteins are being formed and if they are causing the degradation of MSH6, etc. They could do a test in which they have MSH6 that is radio labeled and then they do the setup and see what happens to MSH6. So this is still a hypothesis. So because it is a hypothesis, it's actually not known. Now the question, if you said that, um, is there a way to handle that? Normally our, our cell would try to degrade these proteins. And if the virus is not continuously present, then the cell would start healing. If it cannot heal, it would die. So that is the normal outcome. Paul Borg says, are the nerve ganglion defended by body's normal immune function, the system for the brain or another immune system? So that's a very good question. Brain's tissue does not allow normal immune systems to come and interact with it. So that is a privileged area. This brain has its own oligodendrocytes or astrocytes, its own cells that can behave like defense system. Same is the truth for the ganglions as well. Ganglions are not allowed to have normal B, T cells to come in there. <laughs> Diversity Love says, what if covert happy face stickers become the new TikTok token? <laughs> Maybe. So how about this, that you have the happy face dots on your face. So, uh, Janet, it has nothing to do with Moderna. Moderna, they are a company who are doing cancer research. They will make or patent such sequences and work on them for sequences uh, for the research. And of course, they're going to reach out to the company. Now they can probably build their own labs as well. But still, one company, Moderna-like company, which is still growing and becoming big, they cannot have all kinds of lab research setups there are so many regulations and rules so it may be that they would keep giving the work outside and then what happens outside can be although i'm sure it is very controlled very much audited very much regulated but here we have a virus that we have no idea why it is doing what it is doing Svetlana says, is this true that hydroxychloroquine is more efficient against Micron than I've and how long after onset? I have no, I do not have any um, study for that other than I've heard that um, FLCCC uh, friends say it. So does anyone know of any long haulers from early 2020 infection who have recovered 100%? Some days hard to keep faith. So I know a few of my patients who have recovered, and, and again, not here in the US, in Pakistan, who have recovered fully. Um, my own family members, they are kind of 90, 95% recovered.
So have you seen the leaked Pfizer manufacturing document? The test for in vitro expression would be very morally concerning for many, I think. I do not know. I haven't. haven't. If we're talking about the Pfizer and the spike protein and uh, the lipid nanoparticle moving around, then I've discussed it many, many times. Paul says, I only got halfway through the vagus nerve video so far and may have to watch it twice. Thank you, Paul. And tell me, was it, uh, did I do a <laughs> less than good job on presenting or just generally too much info for a long time? Laurie says, I bought your special also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Denise says, I'm back. Welcome back. <laughs> John Cyrus says, fun with dots. Yes. We should all one day, like good cool beans, wear those dots. <laughs> It was fun. I said to my wife, I said, where are these dots? She said, why? What, why do you need the dots? I said, I want to put them on my face. And she looked at me like I had two heads. Paul says, excellent, very dense material. Thank you. So there are other cranial nerves as well that are really important. My next topic that I want to do is the um, um, autonomic dysfunction and then continuing with the vagus nerve abnormalities and other pathologies to continue with the chronic COVID along COVID discussions. Yep, phrenic nerve as well. <laughs> and he says, your wife was hiding in a closet waiting for the dot moment to pass, yes. <laughs> Dan Robinson says, I'm buying dot, stock in dot manufacturing. Well, let me set up a factory first. So John says, Vegas stock was excellent. Just a, a complicated subject. It is, it, Vegas is the most complicated uh, and longest nerve. Although there are other nerves that also pass through various foramina and they are kind of the pathways are, are complex. But most of the time, I did not do the anatomy for the vagus. I just discussed the connections. Uh, it's the medical students who have to live with learning the anatomy and remembering it. The truth free says, I love the dot. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you guys are bringing me to a point that I have to put a dot on me every day. Keeney says, vagus nerve rock. Thank you very much. <laughs> Genie says, got smacked. Sorry. Um, Jeff says, wax damage. Look at zeolite. So, Augie says, Zofin, fully recovered. 11 long haulers. Very good. Um, Emlyn says, isolation may refer to ICU or intubation. Got it. Denise says the, the Yale lab is looking for fully recovered people to study them currently. That's very interesting. Uh, Lisa says, is Omicron less lethal than the flu at this point? I did a study. At least the Omicron deaths for one month looked lesser than the flu, but we have to wait for some more time to figure it out. Nipa says pH factor. Of course, pH factor works either way, with Omicron, without Omicron, meaning deltas and others too. John Snyder says, meanwhile in America, I am a long hauler from 2021 and mostly recovered. And the reason I'm showing these messages is that if somebody is out there who wanted to hear this, they can see them. <laughs> Augie. Augie says Omicron is less deadly than fentanyl. Fentanyl has done a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> John says the Vegas nerve, nature's long cut. Yes. You are very welcome. Um, there are a couple of other drugs as well that are interesting new drugs for Omicron. Professor K says, I would like to record a lecture by you holographically wrote to you on discord a while ago i usually am so less frequent to discord that so honestly it becomes so difficult for me to have to hold conversations because posting something can mean a response and then a discussion so i usually am very very um, limited in how much conversation i can do but um if you, is it possible that add another message to the DM so that it can surface on top and I can see it? Uh, Denise says, Dysautonomia International posted it. So I will discuss Dysautonomia. Denise says, did you see the post about a breakthrough on POTS research from Toledo, Ohio, released yesterday and how cytokines and glute CCR5 are involved? No, I did not. But it actually kind of makes sense. Can you, Denise, can you send me that uh, study? I can try to research it as well. I'm, I know I'm going to forget. Skyfrog says, thank you for the great offer for lifetime membership. Thank you very much. Actually, at this time, anybody who buys is actually helping because the folks who were just trying to attack us, they are they had brought the business down a lot. And not them, but because of them, the audits and the audits asked us to not sell or not add more content and, uh, and remove a lot of content. Uh, we have removed a lot of videos um, so that caused of course an issue so anybody who is buying is actually thank you very much for helping so laurie says have you heard of ba3 yet yes so not only i heard about it as well i have done that discussion with ba2 ba3 so far is not very much uh, it's not taking off ba2 has removed ba1 but ba3 could not Got it, Denise. Thank you very much. CCR5 actually makes sense. Joe N says, when recently recovered from a COVID infection, why does one not get infected again for a certain period of time? Would this be guaranteed even if exposed to a high viral load? That's a very good question. Let's draw the answer. So the short answer is there is no guarantee it's not necessary that that is what's going to happen and if we start from here infection simply means presence of the pathogen in us or on us but let's say it's a respiratory virus so when it is present in us mouth nose we are infected when it increases in number so let's say this is what arrived in our mouth or nose and so oh well but then it went into the cells and it started multiplying. And now it is, the cell is getting damaged, the immune system is becoming active. And so now there is a war started. And at some point, there would be enough damage, enough load, enough uh, breakdown of things, enough immune response that symptoms will appear. That will be called disease. So the question really should be, can we be infected? Yeah. Uh, is there any way to reduce that infection? Masks and social dis uh, physical distancing or isolations and quarantines and so on. Sorry, excuse me. So that is one. 
maybe in terms of uh, immune system, if we have IgAs, for example, nasal vaccines or GIT type vaccines or a latest infection that is producing enough IgA that is on our mucous membranes, that might help uh, coat the virus as it infects us. And then maybe we will not even know the symptoms. So a recent infection and the disease from where we recovered by our own selves, by our own immune system's behavior or response, will mean that if you got infected, so the question now will become this. So let's say this is your immune system's response, and then it goes down. So let's say this is started within first five days and peaked in, let's say, 10 days. I'm making up numbers. Five, seven days it starts and then it continues to peak and then starts waning after four months. So when you ask this question that if we have recently recovered, the question is, what does recent recovery mean? Here, here, here. At some point you would have symptoms and then symptoms would go away. That is recovery normally, but um, some people don't even get the symptoms. So defining recovery in the terms of this would tell us what would happen. Would this be guaranteed? No. And um, if you, you are in this active state, then it doesn't matter how high the viral load is, your body can handle if it has handled once before. Even in the future, for example, I had COVID. So if the variant is the same and the body is the same, then even if the uh, load is high or low, it doesn't matter, but my body can ha handle it. It has shown that. But if the virus has changed, the body has changed, or the variant is new, then we have a different outcome. <laughs> Diversity loves this. I'm going to put precisely one COVID in a green dot. The dot has become popular. <laughs> we should do a bean cruise. Yes, we should all do a bean cruise. <laughs> Diversity love. This means that the cure is to be slightly infected at all times. So here's the deal. If our body continues to be exposed to a pathogen or to an antigen, our body can decide to not respond to it at all and become um, energic. A-N-E-R-G-I-C. So A-N-E-R-G-I-C. That is what it can do. It can also cause the cells to become exhausted. Um, but that's mostly a theoretical mechanism, not much seen. But energic behavior, not energic, but energic, that behavior is very common. So if we keep our body responding to a pathogen, our body would say, you know what, whatever, I'm not, I'm not talking with you about it anymore. <laughs> Laurie says, dots are very effective though. I thought maybe you lost your drawing pencil. Yeah, so from, I should, I actually wanted to have a marker to make a line to say one virus, the other virus. I just didn't find a marker. <laughs> Connecting the dots, yes. Diversity love, you're making fun of me. John Doe says, Dr. Bean Physics, yes, but we are our own PT dish. Oh, there, there is Dr. Blenny Physics. Sorry, I thought that is Dr. Bean Physics. So this is a very good question. Dr. Bean, uh, will Elijah Hunter says, will interferon nasal drops help prevent getting... So interferon's function is to shore up the defenses. Now, I do not know that these would shore up the defenses to a point that when we get infected, we will not develop the disease. So I would suspect we would develop the disease, but the defenses will be better. So from a mechanism point of view, it may be a milder 
less severe form of disease, less viral load, immune system able to tackle it fast enough. In the meantime, the cells stay stable. And so that is a kind of behavior. Sasha says yes to the bean cruise. Okay. So the truth free says, how are you recovering from COVID, Dr. Bean? Are you feeling better? So I don't get these coughs anymore. I do not get congestion, but I still sometimes feel that my general mucous membrane is a little, uh, not membrane, mucus is a little thicker. So I feel either the hydration issue. Remember, one part of the long COVID is, we discussed it with Dr. Keith as well. What happens, <coughs> excuse me, one part of the long COVID is that the possibility of the congestion in the brain that in turn causes congestion of the uh, cell tertica or, or the stru structures pituitary in the cell tertica, which in turn can cause hormonal abnormality, which one part of that is antidiuretic hormones production, which can then cause um, abnormal production, which can then cause slight dehydration. And so hydrating and correcting hormones can work. So maybe I am that slight dehydrated. Although other than that, I used to have some short spells of breathlessness. I don't get them. I used to have cough. I don't get that. And um, I had. I used to wake up with some nasal congestion that I still get every once in a while. So now I don't know if that is the allergies. So the other thing is I used to get allergies less. Once there were fires and I got, got those coughs for a long time. But uh, I used to get allergies le less. But nowadays, maybe this has triggered it. Generally, I'm okay so far. <laughs> Deborah Boss says, treat the virus. Why is it so hard? That's fine. <laughs> virus is being treated. <laughs> It is pollen season here, yes. It, everybody around me is uh, getting allergies. Joseph says, FLCC or Patterson's? Yes, absolutely. Uh, neuropathy, what I've seen is the earlier, the better. But I have neuropathy uh, patients within my own family, and they have really been helped. Thank you very much. That's very interesting. So in Russia, they sell it being dried, and then you put drops of water and drop. Interferons are very expensive. How are they selling it dried into your nose to prevent seasonal flu? Very interesting. Nipa says NSE is helpful. John Doe says, slowly getting better off topic. Meanwhile, in America says, would COVID still multiply in cells and damage the body if you're hypothetically energic? So that is a good question. Remember in South Africa, there was this woman who had uh, SARS-CoV-2 in her body, inactive state for 260 days or 50 some days. She had the symptoms in the beginning, even to the point of needing oxygen. She was she had HIV and the ther therapy for HIV had failed. And she didn't have anything else. She actually recovered faster than others and went home, but then continued to carry the virus for a long time. So it seems like virus, if, if somebody is in a carrier type state, virus doesn't do that much of a damage. And it just lives with the cells and keeps increasing, which <coughs> I just said I don't have cough and now I've started coughing. This is because of some uh, speaking. So when the when a virus or a pathogen, usually virus, enters a cell and it replicates there, when it comes out, the, the process that is called budding, the process of budding 
can either destroy the cell or keep the cell safe. If the cell membrane kind of pinches outwards and this is the virus inside and then this whole thing buds off, then the cell is safe and the virus is gone as well. This is budding without loss. But sometimes there is just so many viruses and they don't care for the great budding process. They just burst it open and the cell is damaged. So if the cell is damaged and for sure damaged every time, then of course the person will feel tissue damage. But if it is just budding and coming out and going to the next one while it is being cleared out as well, washed away as well, and some immune responses are there too, then it can live in that symbiotic state. <clears throat> Debra Boss says cyclofiron is from Firon is also from Russia. Way better and tolerable to induce your own interferon broadly with drug that induces your interferon. Very interesting. So <clears throat> I use ivermectin three days, 0 0.3 milligram per kilogram for my friends, family, patients. Uh, this is not an advice, but for anosmia or hyposmia or hyponosmia, uh, one can talk with the doctor about three days of fibromectin. Sasha says, I'm on Patterson protocol and it helps a lot, but still have some fatigue, a little vision issues and a lot of tinnitus. Sorry about that. I hope that you become fully recovered soon. <laughs> Texas says, Dr. Bean's not special Luffy spit coated fur. Man, Texas, that is true, but gross. <laughs> okay, to let go say, oh gee, I didn't realize there has been a chit chat. I've been at the former talk. Gee, sorry about that. So there is a question, Augie is saying, what breaks up the microclots? So ideally, aspirin-like things should help. But depending upon the amount of microclots, one may have to escalate to higher uh, or different kind of uh, anti or blood thinners. So... <clears throat> <laughs> Deborah says, you still have the virus. So yeah, they're seeing that the viruses are actually present in some of the uh, GIT parts, actual viable viruses. So the truth free, the new channel name is going to be Mubin Sayyid, uh, Maybe Cool Beans Cafe Live or Mubin Sayyid Medical Live or something like that. <laughs> I will share with the with the folks here. So try with Sarso Tail <laughs> in the nose. I hate Sarso Tail. <laughs> Irritating but effective. But I I don't have a lot of issues. Uh, every once in a while I feel I still have some um, thick mucus. <laughs> and he says, oil down the nose. Love doing that. Recently tried mineral oil. Thank you very much. John Snyder says, Google vitamin A steady loss of smell and Flonase loss of smell and taste. TL says, good night. We are also about to leave as well. It's about 8 o'clock.
Ramnik says, mustard oil is also used for massage and cooking, cheap and beneficial. Thank you. <laughs> Augie says, no, wand might kill you. <laughs> CC says, is it possible for that patented DNA to be in the vaccines? Yes. So the DNA, the vaccine that are based on genetic material, messenger RNA-based vaccines or DNA-based vaccines like uh, adenovirus, they would have the sequence in them as well. So... Let's take a break now and we would see each other tomorrow. Tomorrow, please remember, they, they're going to be multiple lectures. So at noon tomorrow, we'll have Dr. Levitt once again, continuing the discussion about GIT issues. Then in the evening, we'll have uh, Paul Bork with us and we'll discuss the stats. And I think I will prepare something as well to discuss so that is the plan for tomorrow thank you very much please like subscribe and share and if you would like to support this work there is a link in the description that is the the cheapest ever you'll get access to dr bean and then there are links as well you can buy me a coffee or you can use paypal or you can be a patron thank you very much i would see you tomorrow